I've been a surgical technologist trained for over 35 years. So I received my training right out of high school and I did my training with the military, with the United States Army. So I am a veteran, came out because I was in the Army Reserves and then I started pursuing school as far as college. And about two years later, I got my first full-time job as a surgical technologist. in the room at 7.30 and you can start off with putting in tubes in the ear of a two-year-old. By noon, you could be in another room doing open heart surgery. At four o'clock, you're doing a bunionectomy. So literally from head to toe, helping in the healing process of a patient in one day. That's a typical life of a surgical technologist. When I worked with the, the chief of surgery, and we were doing a simple removal of a gallbladder. It was an open procedure. We didn't do it laparoscopically at that time. But I worked with the chief of surgery, Dr. Reed. We were able to do everything we needed to do. And, it, and, and the doctor walked out and he was happy about the fact that I was able to do what I needed to do to help him. Why that's one of my proudest moments because three months prior to that, he kicked me out of his room <laughs> because I was in the room and I could not keep up. I could not anticipate any steps. I had no idea what he's asking for, instruments. You know, I was just so super nervous about being in a room with a cheap surgery and doing procedures that I really didn't know and being left alone for the first time. You know, I really just fumbled my way throughout the procedure and that's not really good because when you start fumbling and if the surgeon gets upset, then you can actually endanger the life of a patient and we never want that. We want you know, competent people in the OR, comfortable people in the OR, and I knew I wasn't comfortable. My goal was to one day be able to be with that surgeon and have a, a great procedure without any hiccups. And that day that that occurred, three months later, he didn't he didn't say thank you. He didn't do anything, but when he walked out the room at that moment, that's when I said, okay, now I'm a surgical technologist. Now I'm ready. The thing I like the most is giving back. Having the students come in, not really knowing what they're getting themselves into. And then when they go to the OR lab on campus and, and we practice and we all work together to get these students where they need to uh, be. And I enjoy even more when they actually transition from the lab and they actually go to the hospitals. And when they get there, the students truly understand that they were very prepared. They, they didn't know what to expect in, in the OR, but when they got there, they know that with the staff that's here on Camerton College, we really got them ready and really prepared to be uh, really efficient in the OR. Uh, one thing that's going on today, right now, they're competing with each other to see who can move a little bit faster, who can, who can cut their time down and prepar prepare for any surgical procedure which is good because part of that is you can only do it if, if it becomes muscle memory and it's, it's like walking down the street that you don't have, don't have to think about it. And that's what you wanna be able to do as a surgical technologist. You have to be able to anticipate what a surgeon needs are. You can't do that if you don't understand what you're doing. I have a lot of peers who work as a surgical technologist and actually retired in the profession as a surgical technologist. Well, I've been a, a director for years, and so I have had students. And I talk to the st students now about going to school to become an RN. It's about becoming a surgical assistant where they can actually make a six-figure income to work as a, sur a surgical assistant who almost is like another surgeon. You know, a another career path is an organ procurement specialist, but it starts at Carrington College to first become a graduate of the surgical technology program and that's just stepping stone towards a career that is vast. The typical student that enters the program is one that enjoys and, and understands about flexibility. As a surgical technologist, it's all about that patient on the bed. You know, a lot of students only know about surgical technology from TV. And so when they look at TV, they know that a surgical technologist can do all kinds of different procedures. So they come in knowing already that, hey, I'm not just doing one type of procedure. I own this patient 
I may be doing all kinds. And so they come in already understanding that they are dealing with a patient life. And so they have to be passionate and compassionate about doing that. And that's the kind of student that we usually get. When I was kicked out of a room as a very new surgical technologist, and that doubt that I had of, man, I wonder if this is for me. You know, he kicked me out and I don't even know if I should even continue to do this. You know, I knew it was for me when I stay in the room, but I also knew because the people who were getting me ready to get back in the room with that chief surgeon, they saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself. And so it was their encouragement, their motivation, their passion to get me to a higher level, to make me see something that I never didn't even see myself, that this was for me. And they knew that once I saw it was for me and I held on to it and I owned it, that I, they knew the kind of person I would be to give back, to give to get somebody else to see exactly what they saw in me, that I would give back the same thing. The whole college is, is working as a team to get them from student to graduate to employee. And I, and I love that. It, it is very intentional and it's very practical and it's very successful. I, I love that about carrying the college.